Good morning. This is John with the Everyday Bible Study. And just want to thank you for uh, sitting in here with us, looking at the Word of God. And we're looking at a booklet called Help from Above. And this is a book that is from World Missionary Press that covers the basics of the Christian faith. And these are things that are important to us if uh, we're going to get saved or if we're new in the faith. And uh, the first one is talking about judgment ahead. And it's, um, first verse here is from Acts 17:31. It says, "Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained, he has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead." Now, you say, who is this talking about? Well, this is talking about Jesus Christ, and that's the one that God has ordained since the beginning of time to uh, judge the earth and each and every person on earth will be judged um, at the point of their death or after their death and uh, each person um, will face one of two types of judgment one if uh, you are unsaved if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior then you will be judged for that and those that uh, face that judgment face a really terrible prospect uh, if you do know Jesus Christ as, as your Lord and Savior, then you'll face a different type of judgment. Uh, you'll face a judgment uh, that uh, will involve uh, you being judged for your good works because all Christians are supposed to produce good works in life. And um, the Bible tells us that some of those people will just barely make it. Uh, but uh, those that do not know Jesus Christ will be judged for that fact, because G, because God has set a path for us to follow in order to make it to heaven. And if we don't make it to heaven, we end up going to hell. And uh, this judgment uh, would uh, be one that would uh, actually separate those people, uh, the ones that are in God's book of life or who are not in God's book of life. And hell is set up as a punishment, uh, was originally set up as a punishment for those angels that rebelled against God uh, in heaven, S uh, Lucifer, Satan, and his uh, followers, his angels, one-third of all the angels, there was war in heaven at one time. And that war ended up with Satan and his angels being cast out of heaven. And where did they go? Well, they came here to earth to destroy mankind uh, because God loves us and we're his creation. And, uh, but... Uh, you don't want to face that judgment because that judgment sends you to hell and then uh, at some point uh, to the lake of fire. And uh, that would be a terrible judgment for anyone to have to ever go through. But uh, uh, if you do know Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you have been born again, then uh, you'll face another judgment. And uh, Jesus will judge you based upon your works, whether you have good works or not. And uh, you will be rewarded for your good works. And he told us that he uh, that we should lay up treasures in heaven that uh, where moth and rust will not corrupt, but uh, will we'll have eternal impact. All the things we have on this earth are just temporary. And when we die, they're gone. And, uh, you know, the old joke is you can't have a U-Haul behind a hearse. And uh, so you can't take it with you when you go. And uh, you, uh, so, uh, you know, you can spend a lot of time, a lot of effort to build up a lot of money and a lot of possessions in this life. But uh, doing so is useless in the long term because uh, it actually is wasted time. That's the time where we should be doing good works in order that uh, we have treasures in heaven. And uh, we're going to be judged for what we do here on this earth. So just remember that. Next is from uh, 2 Peter 2.9. It says, Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. So if you're just or if you're unjust, how do you get justified, you might say? Well, justification is, is really just in a, one sense another word for salvation. It means that you are seen... Um, as basically just right okay and only one that can do that is god and you find your justification or your salvation in being a follower of jesus christ and uh, not just believing in him because the bible tells us that even the demons 
believe in him and they shudder in fear but um, we have to believe on him we have to believe that he can save us and he can change us and uh, we have to uh, devote our life and our will uh, to him and we have to turn away from all sin and uh, believe that he has the power over sin and death believe he died on the cross and that he rose again and then in this uh, he redeemed us from our sins and that we can have salvation through him and then we need to follow him so it doesn't mean that we just believe in him but it means that we make him the lord of our life and uh, if you don't do that then you're not going to be found just and uh, you'll be found unjust and uh, then uh, you'll end up uh, falling for the temptations of this world and the temptations of Satan and facing that uh, same judgment that Satan himself will face but at the same time uh, it says here the Lord knows how to deliver godly out of temptations so what's going to happen here is if you're truly a Christian then you're going to be listening to the uh, uh, voice of the Holy Spirit and uh, you're going to be changed as to who you are and then these things of the world that used to tempt you maybe it's drugs or alcohol or uh, sex outside of marriage or various other things that God um, condemns um, you're going to find out that uh, uh, the Lord is going to deliver you from a lot of these things and you'll be changed you'll be a new person and it your acts uh, your good works are actually evidence of the faith of your salvation so it doesn't mean that we're saved by works but we have faith on Christ uh, that Jesus Christ was born again and then in that uh, God changes their heart makes it to the point where we don't want to sin like we used to and uh, then we ask God to help us uh, when we're in times of temptation and he'll do that and he'll break the chains that are in our life and we'll turn away from that life of sin and trust in God and he'll help get us out of those sin situations that we previously had been involved in next we have second corinthians 5 10 it says for we must all appear before the judgment seat of christ that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done whether good or bad and of course you know there's that that uh, there's those two judgment seats one for those that are saved and one for those that are not and if you have not accepted uh, jesus christ as savior and lord then you know you've done a bad thing and uh, you will face condemnation for that um, because God did create a way for you to get out and to be delivered from sin but it is your responsibility uh, to uh, make a choice to do those things that would uh, allow God to rescue you and he doesn't save anybody that doesn't want to be saved but he doesn't send anybody to hell uh, that uh, does what he tells them to do and in having faith on Christ. Likewise, um, for the Christians that appear before the judgment seat, uh, it says that each one may receive the thing done in, in the body. And, you know, this thing that was done in the body, uh, Jesus uh, told us that we needed to be born again. We need to be born of the water and of the spirit. And um, so... When we're born of the water, that's talking about our natural birth. It's like a woman whose water breaks and then, you know, a child is born. And then being born of the Spirit is just as significant, if not more significant, of a birth. And that is a rebirth that happens uh, by the Spirit of God in our body when we make a decision to repent of our sins and by faith accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Next we have... 1 John 4, 7, it says, Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. So here we're talking about the salvation, that uh, we, can, we can have assurance of our salvation, uh, because when the day of judgment comes, we're not going to fear that. Uh, we know that we're going to be in God's presence, and we can have boldness. Uh, and you know it's going to be a humbling thing to be before Jesus but uh, Jesus is going to know his own 
And if we've trusted in Jesus, if we've had faith in him, then, uh, you know, when Jesus comes to uh, judge us, we can say, I have faith in you, Christ. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I've allowed you to be my example, my Lord. And uh, so, uh, you know, I've lived my life for you. And um, he's going to say, welcome in, good and faithful servant. Now, those, those are words that you want to hear. But you're not going to want to hear the other words that you could hear, which is, depart from me, for I have never knew you. But the fact is, if you do know Jesus, if you do know God in a personal relationship, then you're going to be good. And, you know, they say back in business, uh, it's who you know. Well, guess what? Eternity's just like that, too. And if you know Jesus, then uh, you're in. But if you don't, you don't, you're not going to be. So it's really important on who you know. And Hebrews 9, 27 says, As it was appointed for men to die once, but after this the judgment. So, you know, I know some of you all are watching this. Uh, maybe from uh, some countries. Uh, I know India has a lot of Hinduism in it. And I know we have watchers of these videos from, from India. And uh, uh, I hate to tell you this, but the truth is um, reincarnation is not real. Okay? So when you die, uh, you're not going to be changed into another person or another animal and go through all these cycles trying to reach nirvana that doesn't happen uh jesus told us uh you know and he came he is god so he ought to know what he's talking about but he told us that it's pointed into man once to die so you only die one time now jesus made a few exceptions for that and uh you know he he brought people back from the dead and gave them you know maybe a few more years or something but um uh, there's one final death and then Jesus will judge you. And uh, so uh, you can't say, well, I'm going to live it up in this life. And then when I come back as, uh, you know, this particular creature or this whatever, uh, I'll do my penance. And then I'll, uh, uh, you know, maybe I'll have to go through a few more cycles here on earth. But then I can, I can reach heaven or nirvana or whatever. It doesn't work like that. Uh, what you do in this life is paramount it's 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 essential that you do the right thing in this life in following god and uh, you know living for jesus and uh, so uh, you've only got one shot just one shot so you got to do it right this time and uh, it says here and i saw the dead small and great standing before god and the books were opened and another book was opened which was the book of life and the dead were judged according to their works. And this is uh, Revelation 20, 12a. And, you know, this was talking about people who are Christians uh, right here. And uh, we will be judged according to our works. First, we, our first thing that we have to do is not an actual work, it's an act of faith, is accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord and get born again. And God imparts that unmerited favor, his grace upon us, that we secure with faith that he gave us. And um, we exercise that faith, and we believe on Christ, and uh, we start following him. And then, uh, if we're true Christian, then we will be based, uh, our judgment will be based on our works. And there could be great reward for many people that are watching this who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord and are born again, and then are doing good works. And you say, what are good works? Well, it's anything that you do to uh, keep the Ten Commandments. Um, also, uh, anything you do when the Holy Spirit tells you to do it, um, listening to the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, and uh, those things that the Bible tells us to do, and uh, then... Um, uh, those things that benefit, uh, you know, God, uh, uh, you know, our worship of God and treating God the way he's supposed to be treated and treating other men the way that they're supposed to be treated. And then there are specific good works. The uh, Bible tells us that seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. And that would include the good, uh, uh, you know, treasures in heaven that would be added to us uh, after we reach eternity. 
So uh, the things that we do for the kingdom, uh, things that we do for the church, uh, sharing the gospel, bringing other people into the kingdom and allowing them to have salvation, and then discipling those people and watching them grow up in Christ. And um, uh, so uh, a lot of things could be attributed to good works. Um, you know, the Bible uh, tells us that if we do not produce good works, then we'll be cut off. And uh, so uh, we don't want to be cut off from God, but uh, we want to produce good works and uh, make our eternity even more pleasant. And it says here in Romans fourteen twelve. So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. Now here's the big question. The big question. If you were to die tonight uh, and you went to go see Jesus and uh, you met him in judgment, then uh, are you ready to face that judgment? And are you ready uh, to give an account for your life and can you say that you did what God wanted you to do and the vast majority of people that are living here on earth would not have uh, a good answer to that question one most would say well I don't know if I'd be all right or not uh, but here you found information about what you needed to do and the first thing you need to do is you need to make Jesus Christ your Savior and Lord and he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except by me. And he said, if you reject him in this life, then he will reject you in the afterlife. But if you accept him, then he's going to welcome you in the afterlife. And you want to uh, be welcomed by Christ in the afterlife. And then secondly, if you are born again, then you want to have those good works that uh, showed that uh, you didn't just have faith, but uh, these good works would flow out of you uh, to be evidence of your faith. And um, those people that are true Christians are constantly doing good works. They're doing things to help each other. Uh, they're doing things to help people who are not saved. Uh, they're probably praying for their brothers and sisters uh, that God will draw them into salvation. Uh, you know, and being a prayer warrior is really important. Uh, whenever you pray for somebody uh, or you pray for a situation, then that in and of itself is a good work because that opens up the, uh, the windows of God to, for him to provide blessings to us. One of the good works a lot of people forget about, too, is the fact uh, your actions being obedient to God. And uh, the Bible is very clear what it wants us to do and what it doesn't want us to do. And here we see, uh, we've seen in some previous lessons, we've seen a list or two about if we're involved in various behaviors, then we won't get to go to heaven. And why? Because God changes to true Christians as to who they are. And they're to live in love and they're to live in obedience to Jesus Christ and to God. And uh, when you're changed, when you're made into a new creation, uh, one of the things that happens is the Holy Spirit works in your life and it conditions you into a life of holiness. And you're going to turn away from those sins that would lead to destruction and death, but you're going to turn toward Christ who offers eternal salvation and eternal um, protection from the enemy, from Satan. So you do have a judgment um, that's ahead. And you say, John, what you saying? It's just scaring me so bad. Because I know right now that if I was to die in my sin, uh, you, you know, you told me before that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life and Jesus Christ our Lord. And if I die in my sin right now, I know what's going to happen in judgment. Jesus will condemn me. He's going to say, I never knew you. And uh, then I'm going to face hell. And that is a very scary prospect. And, you know, you may be saying that to yourself right now. What if I was to die and uh, I wasn't prepared? Well, the fact is you can get prepared right now. You can make one prayer. And one prayer can set off a chain of events that would lead you into 
a life uh, that is in compliance with God's will and that uh, you can be saved. Now, the first thing you got to do, and this is the prerequisite to getting saved, is you've got to uh, turn away from your sin and you have to repent of your sin. That's what the word repent means. It means to turn away, like make a 180 away from your sin. And the first way that you do that is you make a decision to do that. And uh, it's not that you're going to do that instantly, but uh, you're going to ask for God's help for that. So what you need to do is you need to pray to God uh, to, that you want to repent of your sin. And you make that decision to turn away from your life of sin and then accept Jesus Christ. Secondly, you have to believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross and when he gave his life freely, he was the perfect sacrifice. He was sinless. He was the Son of God. And uh, that uh, in his sinlessness, uh, we have uh, the power to gain salvation. When he died on the cross, he took all the sins of the world upon him and then God turned his face from him and in that um, he died he became sin uh, so that we didn't have to suffer the penalty of sin and uh, uh, then uh, you know he, he bled his blood and gave his body as the perfect sacrifice because he was sinless he had no sin whatsoever he was righteous and holy and uh, we have to have a holy righteous sacrifice for our sins to cover our sins then when uh, if we believe on Christ, then the Bible tells us that God no longer sees our sin. He instead sees the blood of Christ that's been applied to us because we have faith and we believe on Christ. And we can get reborn. Uh, we can be made into a new creation through the power of God uh, because that grace of God, that, that unmerited favor, that goodness of God uh, to save us has been imparted to us because we have faith on Jesus, then we believe that Jesus Christ died for our sins, we believe that he rose again, and we pray to God, and we tell him that we believe these things, and we ask him to save us, and we ask him to change us, and ask Jesus Christ to be our Lord in our life. And if we make a prayer to God uh, doing those things, then he will save us, and he has promised that no one will perish but they shall receive everlasting life. The Bible tells us that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord in true sincerity and, uh, you know, in full repentance will be saved. So, you know, first you've got to repent of your sin, turn away from your sin. Then you need to believe on Christ, believe that he can change you and believe that he can save you because of what he did. And then what you've got to do is after you've prayed, after you've made uh, you know, exercised your faith before God, then you need to make a confession of that faith. You need to tell somebody and uh, just not hold it in. And at this point, we're guaranteed that through God's power, not anything that we did, but through God's power, if we truly did this, uh, that uh, we receive the Holy Spirit into our life and we gain salvation. God's presence lives within us and uh, then we need to continue to be obedient. We need to read the Word of God and let it change who we are, change your mind, change your heart. And we need to uh, pray to God uh, on a very regular basis. And uh, I would recommend, if you can, uh, and if you're so inclined, uh, to spend at least an hour a day praying to God. And spend that much time, if you want to, uh, reading a scripture, reading his word. If you have a Bible, uh, read that thing. And if you don't, get a Bible. And if you can get on the internet to watch this video, you can um, Google search and you can find a Bible. If you don't have one in your local community, then get online and buy one. And uh, or uh, I know for some people it can be very hard to get a Bible. And the other thing is to find a church and uh, ask God to lead you to the church that you should go to. Most communities around the world have a church, but not all do. And the fact is, there's maybe somebody watching this that would have need to get a Bible themselves and maybe start a church. 
uh, maybe you've got a friend or two or three or four that uh, are uh, Christians but they don't have a church, you could start a church right in your own home. And the fact is, that's often the most effective way to start a church. And then uh, one of y'all can be the Bible teacher and uh, you can continue to spread the word of God and you can uh, win more converts. Uh, tell more people about Christ and what he did for you. Give your testimony to others and uh, lead them into salvation. And one way that you can do that is by sharing these videos and allowing people to see these videos and seeing the Word of God proclaimed. And the Word of God is powerful. There's nothing special about this guy. But uh, uh, the, there's everything is special about Jesus Christ. And he has the power to save. And when you share these videos or share the Word of God, then uh, there is power beca behind that because of God's power. So you don't have to face the bad part of the judgment of, of uh, God. And, you know, Jesus will judge us, but uh, if we're obedient to him and we do what he asks us to do and we believe on him for our salvation, then uh, we can be saved. And then when we face the judgment, uh, we're going to be okay. And uh, he's promised that if we uh, follow him and we're born again, that he will lead us into eternal life, life uh, forever. This body dies, but our soul never dies. It never does. And uh, it has a couple of places it can go to. You don't want to go to the bad place, but you do want to go to the good one, and that's to be with Jesus and God forever. And uh, so uh, I just pray that you will make the right decision. Let's pray right now. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word and thank you for all those that are watching this. And Lord, we pray that you will draw them to make the right decision, to accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. And uh, so that they won't have to face your wrath, but they can face your mercy. And that during the time of judgment, uh, that they're going to be all right because of what Jesus has done for them and the fact that they have accepted him and accepted uh, your free gift of salvation. Lord, we pray that many people will believe, will pray to you, and uh, that uh, they will confess their faith, and that this salvation uh, will be something that they will share with other people. And God, we uh, just pray that your Spirit will work hard upon each and every person that views this video. Lord, we just want to thank you for your love, and thank you that you cared enough for us to send your very best to send Jesus Christ uh, to do what he did to provide us the salvation that we don't deserve. Uh, Lord, we're, we're very unrighteous people in and of ourselves, but we're so glad that you wanted to impart uh, the righteousness of Christ upon our life so that we will be found acceptable before you and we can enter into your kingdom and uh, that we can enter into your heaven. And we just thank you for this. And thank you so much for your love. And Lord, we just pray that many, many will be drawn to you into your scripture and that they will be born again. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today for the Everyday Bible Study. I know the study went a little bit long, but it had some real important information in it. So uh, share this with as many people as you can. And uh, until next time, this is John with the Everyday Bible Study praying that you... Have a great day. Bye.